It was around 2013 when I ventured into a very interesting world called crisis communications. At the time, I was working as a social media marketing strategist that supported leaders with outreach initiatives. At the time, it was very interesting to see that employers had a growing need for helping their employees understand what the social media policy was for their organizations. See, employees were having a very hard time with knowing that even if you're off the clock, you're still having to represent your day job and you have to do it very well or else you risk losing your job. Now, most of us had developed a lot of bad social media habits by that time of things that we were used to doing because to be honest, no one ever taught anyone how to use social media in a way that was productive. So it was up to employers to really train this and put models in place to help employees understand how they should show up even if they were not on the clock. Well, one day I received a very interesting call. This time it wasn't an employee that had said something that offended someone or messed things up. This time it was his kid. Now I had never been hired to support someone's personal life before, so this was very interesting to me. He had a 17 year old son that was a rising track star. And unfortunately due to some Twitter activity, he was at risk of losing his scholarship. Sad thing is, it wasn't even really his fault. His account was hacked and now we had to handle it. We did a good job with Twitter of cleaning it up. But after this particular call, I received a couple more from some of my clients that were having issues with some of their teens. Well, I saw there was a growing need for teaching adolescents how to use this tool. Now, what is strange about this is that the, the guidelines that we have to put in place for understanding productive social media use is something that PR firms had to be concerned about and celebrities. Now, we're asking children to get in front of developing this and being conscientious of these things. And that's a really big responsibility to handle. But you shouldn't worry because I have made it very, very simple. I wanted to be proactive instead of reactive. Instead of cleaning these things up, let's get in front of it and put something I like to call a personal social media policy in place so that you would understand how to use this tool productively in a way that helps you and doesn't hurt you. See, social media can be a wonderful space where you can connect with like minds, other artists, creatives, business people, athletes, whatever. There's a community for everyone. And it's a great space to make the world just a little smaller and bring us all in. But it's a double-edged sword. In the same regard, it can tear you down as quickly as it builds you up if you do not understand this question. What are your goals? Now, you don't have to think 10, 20 years in the future. I'm sure teachers have been asking you this question, your schools, your parents, what is it that you wanna achieve? Let's just take a look at the next five years. Are you hoping to go to college? Would you like to get a scholarship? Are you planning to go to trade school because then you may have employers or clients who are taking a look at you? Maybe you just wanna start a small business right outside of high school. That would be awesome. All the same. All your clients are there and it's great for you to be able to build a personal social media policy that will help you connect with them and start to support your goals instead of deterring you from them and changing the trajectory that you're on. There's a big question you have to ask yourself. What do you want people to say about you when you're not in the room? This question will guide your personal social media policy and you've got to be in full control of that dialogue. Now, remember, there is something that I like to, uh, to call out that will help you it break this down. So just remember it, take out your pen and paper and write down the 333 rule. How do we put the 333 rule in place? First, I'm gonna ask you to give me three words that you wanna be associated with at all times. Now these three words need to be authentic to you. We don't need to develop personas that do not best represent who you are at all times. So this is who you are online as well as offline. It needs to be true, it needs to be consistent, it needs to feel good, something that you will not feel burdened to uphold. Now, then we go into something I like to call the three-second perspective. People make snap judgments, and oftentimes, especially when you're on social media, you will not have the opportunity to defend yourself, especially to potential employers, clients, recruits, and scouts. You want to make sure that your three second perspective, that snap judgment that they make of you is in alignment with the three words that you put in place. And remember, 
This is based on what you said your personal goals are. I love doing things this way because instead of parents and everyone telling you what you can and cannot do on social media, which really rarely ever works, you're telling them and you're setting the guidelines, you're putting the rules in place. I love that because I think it's far more effective if this is something that you can enjoy and it's something that you can uphold. And you have to make sure that all of your content, your activity, your engagement, who you like and follow, and the things that you engage with are in alignment with your three words and with your three second perspective. Now, here is a big question you have to ask yourself. And I want you to sit with this for a minute, don't rush. The next three is, what are three ways you would like to make an impact. You see, we're always thinking about what we wanna take, but I am challenging you to think about what it is you wanna give. How do you want people to feel when they come across you? Do you want them to be inspired? Do you want them to have hope? What is it that you want them to feel? Think about that because this is the thing that really starts to create a ripple that impacts people and affects them and makes them decide whether or not they wanna be any close to you than they already are. And that could be a beautiful thing if you are basing your 333 rules on your personal goals. And remember, this is key, be consistent and be authentic. It needs to really, really connect with who you are, something that you do all the time. Now, here's the hard part. Sometimes people are always challenging you and your social media efforts, even just some of your day-to-day -day activities, and they're telling you what is good and what is bad. I'm asking you to think deeper. Don't discredit what's good and what's bad. It's very important that we have very strong value systems, but our values are going to expand over time. I know mine has, so think a little bit deeper beyond what's good and what's bad and think about what is truly productive for your brand. There are some things that you should not do on social media, and it's going to be because it's not productive for where you say you want to go. So once you can understand your 333 rule, your three words, your three second perspective, the three ways you want to make an impact, then you have to give your social media policy to someone so they can hold you accountable. Accountability is key. It's wonderful if you can give this to a parent, a teacher, an adult, your friends, and ask them to hold you in alignment so that you can stay focused with what it is you said you wanted to accomplish. These are big things. And this ensures that your social media is working for you and you're not working for it. If you can do these things, if you can put this in place, then you will protect your brand, your future, you'll protect your goals, and you'll be able to build it much faster and better with quality networks that can support your vision. Remember, it's not about the likes, the follows, the shares, or the comments, but it's about the impact that you hope to leave on the world. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my talk, and I really hope to see you on the other side of your success journey.